Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 32 of Builders Talk. And, well, I've been on a little hiatus, a little pause, and not really necessarily by choice, but I have spoken before about, I guess, being with my family when they, when they need me. And this year has been very difficult for everyone, and everyone has different reasons for the difficulties that they've been experiencing. But for the last five weeks, I've spent time with my father in hospital as he broke his femur and he then experienced some complications during surgery. So unfortunately, he spent the last five weeks in hospital and not being able to walk and sort of had a rod put in his leg. So it has been difficult for him, obviously, being someone that, you know, doesn't understand why he wants to lay, why he wants to lay in bed. I'm there going, I'd love to be able to lay in bed for weeks. <laughs> um, but, you know, he just wants to get up and go. But unfortunately, because of his accident, he hasn't been able to get up and go. And so that's made him really frustrated and I guess not understanding why he can't get up and do the things that he used to be able to. And I also earlier in the year spoke about my son being in hospital and, you know, I've always wanted to put my family first. And that's why I started my own business so that I could have the ability to take the time off when I needed to and to be there for my family when they needed to, I guess, us to be there. But, you know, everyone that's probably got their own business knows it's not necessarily that easy to be able to take that time and spend that time with family. So while I was sitting with my dad in hospital, I did have the opportunity to, I guess, interview him. So he worked in the building industry and I did ask him, you know, what, were the best projects that he worked on? What was the things that he remembered the most about what he used to do when he worked for the company he worked for? You know, he did some major projects like Parliament House and the Queen Victoria Building in Sydney. So I did ask him, you know, what what did he like about those jobs? What didn't he like about those jobs? But I guess this last 18 months has brought a lot of anxieties, overwhelm, insecurities, you know, not only to me, but also the majority of the population. And these types of feelings often, I guess, manifest themselves differently in different people and they cause people to react in different ways. Some may react with anger. Some people retreat. Some people get frustrated. Some people just want to hide away from the world. And some don't know how to deal with the feelings. And some of these feelings that people have, I guess, they have never experienced. And it causes all sorts of uncertainty and, you know, trying to be able to cope with these has brought a lot of things to the forefront that people may have never dealt with before. You know, people are having to deal with industry shutdowns. You know, some people have too much work. Some people are trying to juggle cash flows between delays and unsustainable price increases within their business. You know, coupled this with dealing with clients you know, that are not necessarily sympathetic to what's happening in the building industry. And, you know, a lot of the situations that the building industry is dealing with are totally out of the control of the builders. So I'm constantly seeing posts in local community groups on Facebook, you know, from people saying they're in the middle of building or they're trying to build and they're, they're sort of ignorant to what's happening in the industry. So most people are starting to become aware of it and are becoming aware of maybe the timber shortages but that's the extent of what they think those delays are. I was replying to a post that someone put up on the weekend and I usually, especially in the community pages, I usually try and stay out of it because sometimes they get quite heated and posts get deleted, you know, people start being keyboard warriors and start saying things that, you know, if you were maybe face-to-face -to, -face to someone you wouldn't normally say. And anyway, so I decided that I would make some comments and, and explain from the builder's side what we're having to deal with. And most of the comments back were people then asking questions, well, what else can we expect to be delayed? I know the framing's delayed, but what else are you experiencing that will affect them? So it, us builders need to be talking more about that with our clients. You know, there is more than just the timber frames being delayed. That is the major frame, you know, that is a major delay that we're having to deal with. But there are other delays that we probably need to be upfront and transparent with our clients so that they get they go into the process knowing full well that 
It's not just a three-month wait for frames. There are other things that are going to delay. There's trade shortages. And us as builders are trying to minimise that, and that's what I explain in these, you know, posts that, you know, builders aren't deliberately delaying these projects. They, they, they need to get money in their bank accounts. They need to keep the jobs moving. It's not, it's not a deliberate act. We're not doing it just to cause issues. There is big issues, and it's sad for both sides of the parties it's it's sad for the clients and it's sad for the builders and you know the clients it is a stressful process just building in general but you know when they don't have any certainty as to when the project might finish you know they're potentially living in rental properties they're worried about getting kicked out of their rental properties because they may have only taken a six month lease I know that in my area the rental market is really really tight And there's more and more people becoming homeless. I went for a walk this morning along the beach and I reckon I counted probably about four people living in tents hidden amongst the scrub on the beachfront. You know, that's they've never been there before. You might get the occasional one there every now and then, but these ones look like they've been well set up. You know, they've 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 built you know, structures around them to try and protect them a bit. So they obviously have been there for a while and, you know, people are getting forced out of their houses due to what's happening at the moment. You know, so how do we deal with those stresses? You know, sure, there's many books that deal with, you know, they tell you how to deal with stresses, meditate, have a holiday, go and do yoga, take some time out for yourself. But a lot of these are short-term fixes and they, I don't guess they don't fix the root of the problem. You know, where is the stresses coming from? What's causing that stress? Yeah, you can go and meditate, but are you stopping that stress from happening in the first place? You know, is there something that can be put in place to stop that stress from occurring, you know, in the first place that's making you have to maybe meditate? So obviously we can't control all of the factors that affect us, but we can try and limit some of the effects and put in some boundaries around us. I've mentioned before about boundaries being placed in your business, you know, around clients and who you want to work with. But I've also been thinking about what other boundaries can be drawn in the sand to protect us. So for the last five years, not five years, the last, uh, the years just seem to be going quickly. Last three years, I've attended a conference in America and I luckily got to go last year in February, just before COVID stepped in and, you know, changed all our lives. But this year they moved it to September, hoping that, you know, borders would be open and people can get to the conference. But unfortunately, obviously, we can't get out of Australia or back in without, you know, major costs or hassles. So I was able to attend the event online. They made the option for me to be able to watch that online. And one of the presenters, Russell Brunson, was talking about the four human needs and I guess what we need to have to feel like we're successful or we're moving forward or we have a purpose. And those four needs were certainty, variety, significance, along with love and connection. And this got me thinking about some of the needs that aren't being met with the world in its current state and it is making, I guess, us feel a bit off kilter. You know, we are missing out on certainty. We don't know what will happen next. You know, we watch the news waiting for announcements to come out of lockdown or go into lockdown. We don't know how our businesses are going to fare, some being locked down and not having the ability to draw in enough money to sustain their lifestyle or their business. And then there's those of us with plenty of work that don't know if they will be able to make any money due to the price increases or the delays or the, you know, all the issues that they're having to deal with. There's not much confidence. You know, a lot of builders are even scared to sign on new work because of the uncertainty that that's in the future, you know, how much more are the timber prices going to go up? How can you lock yourself into contracts knowing full well that I think this month or next month, it's something like a 25% increase in timber prices. So how can we be certain to know that we're not locking ourselves into projects that are going to, at the end of the day, cost us money and, and cause us potentially and some builders to go bankrupt and, I've heard that some already are in that that position. So, you know, some of us are locked down in states and are missing the variety in their life, along with the love and connection. You know, you can't go and visit friends. You can't go out and socialise. We can't travel. 
kids can't even go to school. So we are missing some of the basic human needs that is bringing these stresses into our life and magnifying them because we're not getting, you know, the certainty, the love and connection. And it's that's what's bringing those stresses out in people. And we, you know, we just want things to go back to normal. So how do you put boundaries up for not only you but also your business? You know, Russell spoke about our goals and who you may need to become to reach those goals. He spoke about your identity and what are your rules and your beliefs and your values. So in order to decide on the boundaries that you may want to put in place for your protection, you need to look at the goals and your identity. You know, what are your beliefs? What are your rules? And I've spoken before about your morals. What are your morals that you want to live by? You know, start to define your beliefs around what you want to happen in your business and in your life. What do you believe about your business and what, you know, what does that do for your clients? What are the rules or the boundaries you need to put in place to make sure those beliefs are met and you're not going against what your morals are? So these might, you know, become, I guess, like your policies that you put together. You might decide you'll only work with a certain type of person. You've, you know, you you have to define who that person is. You might decide you'll only work between, for example, nine to five, you know, and after that time, let clients know not to expect any replies or answer calls outside of these hours. You know, clients set up boundaries. They don't want to be contacted on weekends. So why accept that from your clients? You may have rules that, you know, your rule might be, I'm going to go away for a long weekend every month. You know, put it in your diary. Let everyone know you're going to have every Monday at the beginning of the month off. If we don't show people the boundaries, they will step over them. You know, some people think boundaries constrict you and they're, you know, they don't let, allow you to be free, but it's actually the opposite to that. Boundaries do create freedom. If you don't have boundaries and policies, you know, you, you end up with assumptions being made along with frustrations and murkiness. You know, people are just, it's murky. They don't know where the boundaries are. They don't know if they're overstepping the mark. So, you know, people need to know where these boundaries are. And if you do have the boundaries there, you can correct something or someone that isn't working for, you know, it's not working with, I guess, those beliefs or morals or rules that you've set up. You know, if you don't have them in place, you, you, you're letting people, people then think it's okay to do that thing, e.g. contact you after 5 p.m. If you haven't put that there, they're just going to assume you're going to answer your, their phone call whenever they ring you, you're on call. So, you know, you, you can build boundaries to succeed and you are not imposing on people, you're just bringing clarity to situations so that there are no assumptions and no frustrations because you do, you've defined the rules, you've defined the beliefs and the boundaries that you are willing to accept within your life. So start by setting some personal beliefs and rules and values. Like I decided on the weekend I'm going to get up every morning and I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to drink three litres of water a day. I'm going to have one weekend off a month to go away somewhere with my family. Like set some rules and then start to make those things an addiction so that you, you feel like you're, you're getting somewhere and you're achieving something rather than just being walked all over in, in a sense. You know, you put those put those boundaries in. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people that have had old friendships that have, you know, been lost and new friendships have been forged over the last 18 months. We live in a new world and we need to bring more stabilities into our life. We need to bring certainty, variety, significance, along with love and connection. You know, we need that all back in our lives. So what rules are you going to write? You have a blank canvas to start afresh and rewrite your history. Write out your new goals. What changes can you make? What boundaries will help you move to the next level in not only your personal life, but in your business as well? So until next week, keep powering your business.